there are many people who are leaving the United States, Canada, the UK, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, making what we would like to call the Great Migration right here to Africa. It's not easy living in Africa, although may, it may be with good intention. If you're not careful, it can be a bit overambitious. As we once said before, many are finding their transition quite challenging. And often what was intended to be a permanent stay quickly becomes an extended visit. All of this possibly can be prevented if many are made aware of and take into deep and serious consideration some very, very important points. Today, we will be sharing some of these points with you, hopefully to make you and your transition and relocation a smooth and pleasant one. If you haven't done so already, you know what to do. Before we take you into this, please hit that subscribe button. Greetings, greetings, peace, and many, many blessings. We are the Mohammeds, the residential tourists. We are from 85 to Africa. We are living in the after, and it is the Great Migration. The Great Migration. <laughs> many people and their mamas, our mamas, your mamas, even the grandmamas, <laughs> are moving right here. To Africa right it ain't easy folks it ain't easy let us be the first to tell you if you had not been told already yep. so today we're going to talk about five major points on what it takes to live in Africa but watch to the end because we're also going to drop three jewels on you on how to prepare to come to Africa all right, let's get into it. First things first, check it out. I know, you know, when you go to the pool, right? It's hot, you go to the pool. I know she's like, where are you going with this? <laughs> <laughs> then he keeps looking at me like I know what he's talking yeah, about. Cause like, she gonna watch. So you go to the pool, right? You excited, this beautiful pool, is water, you ready to swim. But guess what you're not gonna do? You're not gonna jump in feet first. Why not? Maybe you will. <laughs> anyway, you're going to check the water is what I'm saying. You're going to make sure it ain't too cold, right? You're going to make sure that it ain't a shock to the system. You're going to put your little toe in there. You're going to put your hand in there first. Then you're going to be like, okay, I'm good. I'm going to dive right on in. So here's the thing. This is why I'm saying this. Listen, folk, don't come to Africa and not check and visit first. Yeah. You gotta visit first. You, or or do intensive research. But visiting is highly recommended because what other people show you, most of us that's on YouTube are watching it and that's the extent of our research. But what YouTubers show you most of the time is the beautiful, fun, exciting parts of that country. So you're not gonna see the real. You're not gonna see the, the meat of that country. So you definitely wanna visit and see if this is what you're looking for. Because we've had people come, come to us saying, I just got off the plane. Mm -hmm. All their bags, their children, their, their, their parents, they sold their house, they sold their cars, and they never ever visited this country. And then guess what? They gone. They gone. Weeks <laughs> later. They bounced. And, and not just gone to another country. They back in the States. They said, listen, I'm starting going. Starting over. <laughs> going to what I'm familiar with. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because, listen, again, it ain't easy. It's not easy, right? And even like, like my wife was saying, okay, you got the YouTubers. Yes, they're here. We're here. Boots on the ground. 
right? However, you can't solely rely on on the YouTubers, right? Because each person's circumstances, their dynamics are completely different, okay? And so what might be good for the goose may not be good for the gander. What might be good for one may not be good for the other. And then again, or in addition to, I should say, is you know, we're capturing as much as possible in a more snippet, snippet, trend, you know, um, format, right? The day-to-day, every day, what you don't see, you know, some of the infrastructure that you can't capture, you just can't capture, is something that, you know, you have to see for yourself, all right? So the takeaway, I guess, would be assess uh, what your needs are, what your wants are, what your goals are, and kind of measure them up, okay, with the infrastructure of the country. And weigh the pros, weigh the cons, okay? All right, next thing. You gotta establish, well, it will be best that even in all of that, before you come, try as much as you can, two things. Try to establish a network, right? There are many, and my wife was good with this before we came, right? Many uh, social groups on the different social media outlets of individuals who are in specific parts of the continent, different countries, right? And a lot of information is already there. Yep, and you can pretty much, we're, we're in groups like in Dubai. Kenya groups, um, groups in South Africa, right? groups here in Rwanda, and join all the groups, every group you see. But more particularly, if you're a mom and you have children that's going to be homeschooled, join the homeschool networks that they have for that country. Right. If you are going to, if you're trying to start a business, you definitely want to join an expat group that has the business networking so you can find out about the visa process, find out about taxes, find out about how much it costs to do blah, blah, blah. If you are a fitness group, join groups that people are going to run together, running groups, people that have workout partners or, or their single mom that works out and, and they have these groups in different areas. You want to definitely join those groups because they're going to give you the real, real information that you're looking for. The, the type that you would never even know about unless you're here or you're in one of those groups. And you get a friendships, so you get you establish some type of um, teams that you can actually, before you even get here, connect with. But also you want to find locals, that's, that they're local people that's right. in those groups as well. That's absolutely right. They always, you know, local groups in there and say, hey, I have a gym, I have uh, tutoring classes, I have, I, I, teach, I teach for where I'm running, teach Kenya Rwandan. Um, and they target the expat community because they know that's things that we need and they're able to offer it to you. So you partner yourself up with that before you even come, just start working on it. So when you get here, everything's not totally foreign to you. Exactly, exactly. And one small thing to add to that, once you do, or if you do get here, um, you have that network. However, when you get here, find your tribe, right? Meaning, look, just keeping it 100. Everybody's not going to vibe, right? So sadly, the expat community, it's really not as unified and collective as you may think or want to think or desire, okay? And so you're going to have to, just like if you were anywhere else, you're going to find that person or persons that you jail with, okay? But open yourself up to jail. Yeah, that's, that's very key. Open yourself up, okay, to be able to jail, just like my wife said. And when you find that person or persons, then, okay, you rock with them. You ro- you ride with them, and uh, it definitely is very, very, very helpful. Yeah, it makes your transition a little easier. Um, you can share your frustrations. You can share your joys and your struggles, um, things that, especially if they were there already, so they can help guide you along the way, tell you the do's and don'ts so you don't have to burn your hands too. Right. You know, so you definitely want to find those people that you connect with doesn't have to be an expat. It doesn't have to be a black American. Just find those people that can help you along the way. That's right. Very All good. right. Let's move on right along. All right. So you got your network. You got your tribe. Okay. Here's something very, very important. Acquire an advocate. Kind of what my wife just said about finding someone who is maybe a local. Okay. A local, a person 
who or persons, if you will, who you can you you can trust. Okay, someone that you know that could sh show you along the way. You know things. Um, I guess when you dealing with just the everyday day to day, whether it's uh, driving or being driven. Okay, so you're not getting got. Because guess what? It's gonna happen. <laughs> The drivers are going to try to hit you, beat you over the head, right? Not literally, but as far as pricing is concerned, you see some nice artwork along the side of the road somewhere. They're going to hear you talk, and guess what? They're going to beat you over the head. <laughs> They're going to get in your pockets, right? And we were fortunate to have an advocate prior to us coming and while being being here to be able to help us. It was I'm telling you it helped out considerably because they know. But you they know, know, what happens is, what we're noticing lately, a lot of people come and they want to do it themselves. And they get frustrated. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of crazy because you were watching people on YouTube giving you their stories, but you never reached out to them to say, do you have someone that could do X, Y, and Z? Mm -hmm. A lot of times we're afraid, thinking that, okay, they're going to charge us this, or they're going to charge us that, but... If that's going to help you to not come and lose all your money because of being overcharged or not knowing what you should be charged or being got, like he said, then why not? Right. Why not? Or you befriend them so that they know you're coming and they look out for you. Listen, I'm trying to take care. I found the house. Or can you help me with finding a house? Or, you know, another expat pretty much can know what you're looking for. They can understand what you're saying. Right. Right. And then they can relay that to being boots on the ground and finding that for you over here versus you thinking, OK, I'm just going to jump in. I seen that local on YouTube. I seen him on Instagram. Yeah, but they don't understand the culture of the expat. They don't understand when you say you need views and they're looking for houses for you and they're giving you houses inside of gates and you're not getting views, mm. but it's a nice house, so they figure they'll show you, but it's wasting your time mm. and your money and your energy. Mm. So find ways to not loophole, but make those connections so that you're, I'm, I'm telling you, what our journey coming here was so easy, it was scary. It was, a it was scary, but you cannot be afraid to invest your time and energy on people that are already on the ground. Don't come trying to do it yourself because you, don't, you absolutely will get lost. You will get lost. And we're not just talking about here in Rondo. We're sharing stories of people. You guys tell us your whole life on the comments. So we're sharing stories of what people have told us. You know, and this is one of the reasons why it happens. Because we're not trying to reach out and make those necessary connections. Very true. Very, very true. All right, moving right along. So here's something I'm sure you all can appreciate. Which, you know, I got to be honest with you. I didn't really take it to heed as much as I should have until after some of you guys have commented right on some of the footage that we've shared with you guys but this is very important learn the language as much as you can learn the language all right so because when you when you're learning the language you're also learning the culture all right you know learning the language what it does it 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 it, it absolutely helps to build trust and a more genuine type of relationship can be established so now as black expats i'm thinking is this in most cases all right i'm returning back home um same same black skin black skin right and forgetting though they don't have the same issues that we have in the states as it relates to um seeing someone that reflects you and just automatically there's a there's a there's a common entity simply on just surface level right there so the continent is you know as far as natives are concerned is 100 percent black <laughs> for the most part right and so what it is that differentiates them is in fact the language the language so when you learn the language this is what we're finding and this is what we're learning is that when you learn the language then they feel more connected with you 
as opposed to just the fact that we look we look alike and we look the same. Learning the language has helped, you know, us uh, considerably. Probably more so me because I, I learned it. I learned more than she learned. <laughs> no, no. So this is the thing: learn the language according to your to your uh, abilities. There's no way we could learn Kenya no, no, before can't. we came here. There's no way because you you'll learn if you try to look it up. You're gonna try to say it what you're reading. And then bring that over here, and it's funny because half of those letters is not part of the word that they're saying. But don't no, don't try to learn it before you leave. When well, you get here, when you're oh, here, oh, when you're, when here, you're okay. living in Africa, learn, make that a part yeah, of. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. For me, I had to learn the language and food terminology. That's how I was able to pick up what I pick up. How do we say potatoes, ifalitis, and karotis, and and igatoki and stuff like that? I had to learn it through the food language because I'm a chef. So when I started learning what I was interested in, I could learn little pieces outside of that. Um, of course, the mannerisms. Thank you, please, how are you, good morning, all those things. Sure. You definitely want to learn those. That's just basic conversation and passing. Mm -hmm. And um, if you say that, especially if you're black, no one will ever know that you're not Rondon until they say the next sentence in your life. All right, hold on, slow up, time out. <laughs> I don't even know. That's all I know. I'm a neither. And they go on and you're like, that's it. That's all I got for you. I promise. I have one sentence. For some reason, for me, I really look Rhonda, especially with the short haircut. So they don't even believe me when I'm like, mm, I don't, that's all I got. I got one sentence for you. Um, but if it's a country that has more than one language, like Rhonda has Kenya Rwandan, and then prior is French, and then English. So... For me, if it's an older person, I can connect more with them because I speak very little French, but I can understand it. Um, and I've created my own sign language. I did. <laughs> so people don't understand. I'm like, you eat. <laughs> you got our own language. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Drink. You know, do your sign language. You have to find a way to communicate without getting frustrated because you're not being understood. Right. All right. Good stuff. All right. So now, here's the thing. You know, you got to remember this. You might think this is not even important, but it's important. You're not a citizen. <laughs> You're not a citizen. You know, and there's a reason why I'm saying this. You come, again, you dive in, and the, the aspirations, which is understandable, of being reconnected to the roots, all right? I know the origins of us, we African, but guess what? You're not a citizen, all right? So you have to keep that in mind when, in fact, you move forward with very major, major moves that you're trying to make, all right? So a lot of that, you know, is pertaining to your investments, business moves, you know, because it's real. You know, these, these laws apply differently when you're not a local, okay? Yeah, yeah like, <laughs> for instance, here... We were told once you get your work visa, you can apply for your residential ID card and you can use it. You'll have all these perks and you can use it in any East African country. Well, we try to use our ID card and so far the only benefits we get is at the Marriott. You get a nice, you don't have to pay the, the I think the taxes or something on yeah, it. Yeah. And you, you can benefit if you get, you go to, uh, another country and you get the little pass because you have your residential card right but when you look at your residential card and you're all excited thinking that i'm part i'm rondon resident it says foreigner <laughs> <laughs> straight up and i didn't know that until recently when i'm like well why aren't why can't i get um why am i paying this and it says if i have a residential if i'm residential i should be paying that and then the guy showed me foreigner residential card i'm like god they make, they make it clear that hurt my little feelings. <laughs> well, what's the point of having this card then? So, um, no, you're you're never you're not a citizen. You you're you are a um, a you, resident. You're a resident. You're a foreigner you know, resident. You're a foreigner resident, <laughs> but you are still governed by the U.S. the U.S. Embassy, right? And and so forth. So, no matter how hard you try, we have people here that try to take on the whole Rwandan identity. I only want to hear Rondon music. I only want to dress in, in tenge and girl, 
You're still American. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> no matter how hard you try to blend in, and the locals do not see you as a Ron. <coughs> I don't know if they don't want to or not. But so that leads us in, right? That's good. That's a good segue. It goes right into the next point, which is they don't view you the way you view them, which, as my wife was saying, clearly they see you. You're a foreigner. This is how they view you. So we've talked about it many times before. It's word Mzungu, right? Mm -hmm. Even though the literal meaning of it is white man or white person, it's a general perception that strictly means for them foreigner. So even though Mzungu means white man, white person, or something of the, of, of the like, for myself, for my wife, for whoever is non-white, you are, for us, black muzungu, okay? So, we're coming again thinking that, okay, because we have an affinity, because of our similar roots, that we are not going to be viewed other than that. But that's not the case. You have to know that you are clearly going to be associated as a foreigner. And be okay with that. You gotta be okay. You gotta, you gotta be okay with that. There's now keep in mind, okay, we don't want to be considered that. We want to be, but your blue passport does come with some perks to it. It's real. And and whether you take advantage of it or not, they they know that. They know you got the blue passport, and they know you got perks that come along with having the blue passport. Right. So there's nothing you can do. Don't even fight the energy. Just be like, okay, it is what it is. If you're in a country that sees you like that. Now, we're understanding and we're learning that some of the smaller countries um, can spot and see and know, okay, that's a foreigner. Some of the bigger countries, they don't care. They've been, it's, a, it's multicultural, it's a melting pot. Everyone has the same type of rights just about. They don't care about you, where you come from. You're just a person. So you, that's part of your study. Is that something that matters to you? when you're choosing the country that you want to live in and you have to figure that out so so we where our thinking is that with these particular points here you know if you if you take it into consideration okay because you're going to be confronted with these things there's no way around it take these into, things into consideration if or when you do move here right and we're thinking that if you do you know it, it will be of 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 help, a great help in the smoothness of your your transitioning, okay, and you're getting um, what's the word uh, acclimated to the cultural society that you're that you're in. So we're hoping that this is going to be um, well received and well taken, and we're hoping that may, what we may have shared is of good and uh, it's a takeaway, some takeaway for you, whether you're here or not. You know, uh, if you're coming. And looking to come hopefully it's of good if you're already here right and you're finding some of these things challenging then maybe it's a takeaway for you uh, as well all right now what's the gems so three important things that you should think about that's not common it's not a thought when you're writing your plans out but it, it turned out to be very 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 important for our family anyway as you prepare as you prepare so you've already visited, you decided you want to move to that country, you're going back home, you're packing up, you're selling everything. Here's some more things that you need to think about. Number one, if you are a retiree, a senior, a mama, one of the, the papas coming over, what do you have in place if you were to pass on the continent? Mm. What is your desire? What do you want? Put in place and make sure the whole family understands if one, you want to be buried in that kind of, wherever you're moving to, um, you're moving to Mexico, do you want to be buried in Mexico? Or do you want them to ship your body back to the States? If it's shipping the body back to the States, put those things, put those steps in place so that the burden is not on your family and you take care of that whether it's medevac back to the states medevac yeah that's the word or you got to be flown back to the states or whatever the case may be make sure you take care of those steps 
and and if there's a plot in the states that you that you need to get and make sure all those things is taken care of um we sat down with our mamas and asked them okay we're moving to africa do you guys you do understand that once we move to africa and we're planning to stay on the continent that is quite possible that that might be your last place of, of, of residency that you on would, the earth on earth are you okay <laughs> with being buried in africa they had to both say yes and now what kind of burial do you want because we need to make sure if we're moving to a country and you're saying you want to be cremated we need to move to a country that that acknowledges cremation right. so we also need to research those things and, and if that's the case well how much does that cost let's make sure we have those things in place um, we've also learned that some people moved to, uh, they lived in the islands and they have insurance policies, but they weren't able to, they had to go through a whole lot of loopholes in order to get the benefits for their family because it was on the islands and their system was totally different. And every country and every island does not have an easy embassy, a U.S. embassy that has things in place. So you got to research and see how would that affect your, uh, your last living will. So make sure, especially if you're in that retiree age or anybody coming over, you're living well for that country and your family back in the States. They need to be able to understand what your last wishes were. That's very important. The sun is, 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 is ah, decided to pop on out. That's the guy saying, <laughs> that's right, that's right. Number two, people, if you are anyone that takes medication, especially special medication, for special needs of any any kind. When planning to come over here, you want to, one, research, does that country offer that type of medicine? Number two, if they don't, do you have a way to make sure you have at least six months to a year supply? So when you do come over here, you have a chance to find out how you can get it, especially if you're in a country that like Rhonda, that's landlocked. Shipping's not that easy and it's extra hard for medication to come in. So you want to make sure that you can bring your medicine over in abundance. And then, you know, what we did when we first got here is people were coming so much. We, my mom would still place her order at Walgreens and have someone pick it up and bring it over for her. And she had another 90 day supply and a 90 day supply. But now we have connections with our own with our pharmacy here, with Trinity Pharmacy, where she can research and find out, okay, what wholesaler out here has that medicine or have comparable medicines that is exactly like the one you're taking. So those things are very important because uh, we've had people come over, didn't have their blood pressure medicine, and it took days for us to find that type of medicine that they were taking. And their blood pressure was going up, they were getting headaches, and we were worried about them. So you have to make sure that your medication is in abundance, on point, and maybe that country has it or have something comparable that you can already research before you come here. That's number two. And the third one was, I'm going to blank. What was the third one? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Medicine, living will, and oh, know the laws of the land. Very important. Not basic laws like, can we hug in public, like PDA and then you get arrested. That's something you can easily research. But for people, let's say for my husband, who's a photographer, um, when we came to visit, we seen all these beautiful hills and mountains and beautiful villages and people just mind blowing. And the whole thought was, man, we can get that up there, get the, get the aerial view of the mountains and of the lakes and so forth. And um, didn't realize you cannot have a drone here. You can have one, but you have to one, get a certification, take a class, get past the class, pay for the class, take certification, and your drone has to stay locked up until you complete the class before you're able to have permission to fly here. Um, other countries that we, we research, you're not allowed to blog or you wasn't allowed to blog in public areas. You, like what we're doing right now, that would be against the law in some of, these, some of the other countries here. So, and, but the laws changed. So some countries that couldn't have it before, now they're allowed to. Um, stuff like if you had the drone and you were caught flying the drone, it goes 10 to 20 years in prison. 
not expedited, in prison. <laughs> so you have to understand that some laws that you seem very minor, okay, I was flying a drone, big deal. My drone don't even have a camera on it, or blah, blah, blah. No, you can go to jail for that. It does have a camera, that's the purpose. But anyway, go ahead. Well, I mean, I'm saying, but you know, some drones just on the cloud. And whatever, I'm just saying, you can go to jail. Why do you say that? It is a camera. I mean, <laughs> just straight annoying. But you can go to jail for not knowing the laws of your land, laws of the land that you're moving to. Right. So you definitely want to at least know those three um, points before moving to your country. So those are good. Those, those are great, great takeaways, you know, in preparing, you know, uh, in transitioning move here. So hopefully family, uh, again, what we've shared is uh, a good, it would be helpful for you and you're preparing to come and while you actually do come and you begin to transition from one way of life within a cultural society to another. As always, we are grateful for you. We appreciate you. And um, come on now. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If it's something that you like, please let us know. And hit that it. like button and tell a friend. Share it share it share it and if you have something that you like to to add on to and share we'd like to hear from you go ahead please place a comment until next time family it's been all love it's real peace and blessings